Hi, my name is Juan Segovia from JuanLittleDevil.com, and I'd like to talk to you guys today about multiband effects. Um, I'm also going to show you guys how you can make your own effects, and um, today we're actually going to make a multiband stereo imager. Um, before we get started, though, um, let's talk a little bit about what multiband effects are. Well, multiband effects, as the name suggests, are effects that work on multiple bands of audio independent from one another, meaning that each band will have its own effect with its own unique parameters that are independent from all the other bands. Um, some examples of these type of effects units are things like multiband compressors, um, harmonic exciters, which operate in a multiband fashion. Um, there are some multiband reverbs, um, or like what we're going to do today is the stereo imagers. Um, you know, these, these types of processors are commonly used in the mastering phase of music production. However, there's nothing that says you have to use it in that way. And in fact, um, you can make some really nifty, creative, um, more sound design type tools by creating effects such as this one. Um, but before we get started, I just want to quickly show you guys um, a little bit of what we're going to do here. And let me just bring up um, this little thing here. So this is essentially what we're going to be doing. We're going to be taking a sound source. It's going to hit our multiband unit. And then we're going to split it. We're going to set some crossover points. And then we're going to put effects on different bands. And then, of course, it's going to mix back and and back into the mixer and out. All right, so, uh, you know, how we're going to do this <laughs> is fairly straightforward. Um, but before we get, you know, started with that, I just want to play this drum loop here for you guys um, so you can kind of get an idea of what we're going to do. First of all, here's the drum loop. And as you can see, it's pretty mono both both left and right are playing right exactly at the same time and and we want to be able to turn this into a more stereo effect so essentially we're going to want to do two things in order to do that you know we have um we're going to use something that gives us width so as you know the utility plugin has a width little dial here and as you turn this down to zero, it makes things mono. And as you turn it up to 200, it spreads the signal across the stereo field. So we're going to be doing needing that. And, you know, we'll also make use of a simple delay. Um, just so that we can not only, s you know, split up the, the, the sound, but we can also introduce just a little bit of delay between the left and right channel. Um, so one thing we're going to want to do, though, is we're going to want to turn this to time. I'm going to turn this to the lowest setting. And we don't, when we feed this through, we want the entire signal to be affected. So we're going to turn the wet dry to 100%. Um, and um, next, we're going to want something that will split our signal so this is how you actually do this will become our uh, the, the crossover points and this is how we're gonna set up our different multiple bands so the first thing we got to do is create a group so I'm gonna select everything you can do that by holding that shift and you know clicking on each one of these um, then Command G or Control G if you're in a PC will group this. You know you can also do a right click and say group. And you know we're gonna split this, so we're gonna create three different chains. But before we do that, let's map the just the low frequency say to five and. Uh, high frequency to one and these these will become our crossover points here so we're gonna make sure that we have you know we'll set them 
so that uh, each of the bands is nice and wide and then we'll rename this let's make this one our high band and we're gonna deselect low and mid so only the high frequencies are being passed through this and then we'll go ahead and duplicate this and again to duplicate it just command D or control D and or you can duplicate you doing that command R to rename and we're gonna rename that to mid right and then duplicate again rename that to low okay so for the low we're only gonna need the low band so we're gonna uncheck the high and check the low and we'll do the same for this one but we'll do the mid right okay now that we have this we have to make some decisions as to what sort of control we're going to have with this. And typically, stereo imagers have a width dial, and you'll also find a delay dial. So we're going to do some, you know, let, let, let's, let's color this just for the sake of having things kind of tidy here. So I'm going to color this to green and... I'm going to color, uh, I don't know, all of these are going to be this orange just to make things a little bit easier to see and you'll see why in a minute. And let's make the bottom one uh, this sort of yellow. Okay, so the next thing is we're going to rename this macros. This is going to become uh, low width mid width and high width. Okay, and then we still go to this one, and these ones are going to be our delay. So this is going to be low delay, mid delay, and high delay. Okay. So then we go into each one of these, and we say, okay, we need to map this here to. Uh, high width and then we need to map this one to mid width and this one to low width okay so set pix back down to 100 or, or close to 100 okay and next we're gonna apply some delay so the, the with the delay here's a little catch you don't want to map both of them because the idea is to try to separate the the left signal from the right signal. You want to spread it up, up apart, not just in the stereo field, but also a little bit in time because that's that's what's going to really give you the illusion that you know things are um, in a in a wider range. So what we're going to do is we're only going to map one of these channels to the the delay so this is low that we're doing so let's let's do low delay there and the mid one we're gonna map that one to mid and that one to high however we don't want to give it such a, a huge like 300 millisecond delay for for a stereo imager is a lot we really only want about 20 milliseconds so we're gonna and this is where coloring these things really help because it's a lot easier to just say, oh, this is the color I want to do and, you know, affect that as opposed to trying to find, you know, the by name, um, which can be a little confusing if all of them are the same color. So, you know, that's, that's why I do it, at least. Mm -hmm. All right. So you have this done now. <laughs> Let's give it a try and see what it sounds like. So we'll play this again. Still pretty static, right? Um, so typically, you know, um, low sounds can like, we'll leave it where it is, and then what we'll do is we'll, we'll, we'll try to spread the mid and high signals, right, and then we'll add a little bit of delay to this. And then you can already see that
And of course, you know, if you feel like typically when you when you apply widening to certain frequencies, um, they become they give the the appearance of being farther apart. So you know, you, you still have some control over these dials right here, which can help you boost the signal just a little bit, kind of compensate for that. There you have it. Um, I hope this uh, tutorial has been insightful for you and um, at least open your eyes into the possibilities of what you can do with this type of, of uh, device rack. And uh, yeah, be sure to check out my site, www.juanlittledevil.com. And I will be seeing you guys later. Bye bye. <laughs>